when you hear the whoosh of those burners go on, you just know things are in a good place. You know that the heat's coming and the beer's coming and it's pretty, pretty awesome. I graduated from college in 1981 and I didn't have a job. So I called my brother and asked if I could live with him. He lived in the River West neighborhood, about a mile north of here. Since he was nice enough to let me live there, I, I figured I should buy him something for his birthday that was coming up. And I bought him a book on how to make beer. He actually read the thing. And then he made a batch of beer, which looked terrible. But when I drank it, it was not the worst beer I ever had. It wasn't that bad. So it was fairly drinkable. It was. Uh, interesting. Uh, he came and tried the beer and to my surprise he bought a kit and ended up home brewing. So I figured you know him being my brother if he did it that good you know I could do it better. So I brewed beer, he brewed beer, started entering our beer in local contests, won local awards, state contests, won state awards, national contests, won national awards and about that time our friends started telling us you guys should open up a brewery. And when you're 20 something years old you, you think that's good advice. We found an old bakery building down the street from us in the River West neighborhood of Milwaukee on Chamber Street. Bought a bunch of 55 gallon stainless steel drums, brew it on weekends, keeping our, our day jobs. And we had four taverns we frequently drank at and all four of them put our beer on draft. So December 2nd, 1987, we wheeled our first half barrel down the street. We wanted to contribute to the image of the city as far as a brewing center. But uh, once you start brewing, you realize that any illusions you have of uh, this being a glamorous job are quickly sent away because uh, it's long days, it's hard work, it's hot in the summer, it's cold in the winter, there's constant lifting and there's perpetual cleaning. So you're, you're working your fingers to the bone there, what can I say? Eventually outgrew the Chamber Street location, moved down here to Commerce Street on the river in 1998 to where we are today. We're 45,000 barrels and in the top 100 breweries in the United States. pretty good setup here that allows for us to make more beer. Right behind me is that's the main control center of our spaceship brew deck. So that's where all the driving takes place. Everything is right there on that computer screen. We can flip through it. We can look at all the different equipment. I don't want to say it's easy with my boss standing right there, <laughs> but we don't have to run underneath the brew stand and turn valves. We just click buttons and they open and close automatically. So it helps us to brew more beer quicker to get it out to the masses. One thing I've kind of noticed throughout the years is that when you educate people about taste and flavor and they understand what a hop and what the malt flavor is in the beer, it becomes more interesting, similar to what grape goes into wine. Here's a short version. That's where we make it, that's where we drink it. <laughs> We have a lot of firsts under our belt. We made the first organic beer, the first gluten-free beer. Uh, we were the first uh, certified travel green brewery um, and the first travel green business in Wisconsin. So uh, we're actually very quietly a pretty big innovator in the craft beer industry. My favorite thing about giving tours is meeting all sorts of people from all over the world. I've had people from Antarctica, Africa, Asia, every continent now on my tour and they all have similar interests. They all like drinking good beer. The reason why I still love giving tours after six years is because people still leave happy. They still try new beers and that's one of my favorite things is when people come up and say, I can't drink a dark beer. And then they try our East Side Dark and they're like, wow, this is not terrible. And I'm like, I know. The most important thing someone should know after going on a lakefront tour is that beer should be fun. Uh, our tours are about having a good time. Uh, there's a lot of jokes. So we don't take ourselves too seriously, uh, but we do make good beer and that's what really brings everyone together. It is quite an art not only the fact in sourcing the ingredients, 
make sure that everyone that you have is the best you possibly can find to go in to give it the flavor, but also how you brew with it. To me, I always use the analogy where if you have like a guitar, everybody has six strings and they all make it sound different. It's a symphony. You gotta find your timing. You gotta be able to grab things, touch things, smell things, taste things, hear things. You also have to be in sync with everyone else in the brewery, with the kegger, with the guys that are running the cellar and transferring the beer with the bottling line. We all gotta communicate and we keep each other going and then we all drink beer at the end of the day and come back the next day ready and roaring to go.